Okay, hello everybody, I'm back. So, today I'm going to start putting wires to things. Um, the uh, the way I'm going to try and remember basically the way a lot of these go, they say V1.1, 1.2, 1.3, etc. I can also peek at these and just look off the top of my head. I, I know some people will have this memorized, but like V1 I think is usually anode, 2 is grid, and 3 is um, cathode. I can peek. Uh, no, I just had that backwards. V1. <laughs> Is cathode, but anyway, so you can, I can, uh, I thought I had it memorized and I was wrong, so that's why I have a double check. So, um, so basically, I can look down here at the schematic and it shows you. So, the way they have it wired is that V1B or the second half over here is what's connected to the first stage, and then the second stage connects to this. I don't know why I've seen that done a decent amount, but uh, you know, either way it's done really is going to work. So, I'm just going to quickly turn on my soldering iron. Set this aside and uh, start my fan so it'll be a little noisy, but you'll see me starting to hook up some wires. I'll just hook up the wires down through here, uh, and then I'll also be doing those up there. So that's the plan for today. And then I went and put the wrong one right off the bat. <laughs> what a ding a -ling. This one goes to be three. Now, if you notice on this one, it says not applicable on the middle one. So, but I'll double check again. 1.6 is the anode again. So, that's the pattern I always follow. Is anode, grid, cathode, anode, grid, cathode. And I'm sure at some point here, I'll probably make one of my connections a little too short, and I'll get to desolder it and resolder re a wire that's long enough since I don't have this in the chassis. But I'm pretty sure none of my reaches are more than a few inches so I think we'll probably be fine but of course we will find out I just try to estimate how much I think I'm gonna need and that's pretty much it so from this point on I don't think you need to watch me doing that you've seen it I'm gonna, I'll come back now that these have had a chance to cool snip excess lead we don't accidentally have any chance of say arcing or anything and just keep them nice and isolated I think we're going to come along and bend those a little on accident. They could touch one, get close enough to arc. So that way we have no length of our lead to go to. And that's done. So I'm going to repeat that down through here and start doing the other stuff up there. I'll bring you back because I start doing a little bit here. But uh, that's enough for there. I think that will give you the gist of how that goes. Okay, so as you can see, I've gotten through quite a bit. I've got, um, I'm just going to use this. I've got the, as you can see, I've, I did use black on a few that I know are ground connections in theory, just so it's easy to tell that's a grounding connection, but the grounds are going to be coming off a few specific spots on the board. But I didn't do the channel switch here and the overdrive here because I know the overdrive is coming over here, and I have to look at the bo book if there was even a channel switch here. I know there are several switches over here. This is possibly optional if you don't want it on your foot switches, but I have wired up my foot switches as well. So you have to put both the, the of these two, 12A and 12B and 13A and 13B, on only one of them. So I chose OD as my tip, preamp boost as the mid, uh, as the ring, and then the panel only will be the mid switch. So that the mid switch is part of the um, mid control. It's a push pull pot. So, um, but yeah. So, and then I just, as you'll see, I just kind of alternated colors or every other one, just so that it's easier if you're trying to troubleshoot a specific pot, which color is the input or the output at the time. It doesn't I could have literally done them all the same color because they're all signal path or ground, but. Uh, you know, that just helps anybody, myself, when I'm wiring or anybody troubleshooting to see which color was the one they were particularly looking at. Um, you know, if you've got all blues, you have to kind of keep touching each of one of these leads somewhere else until you find the one you're looking for. But if you know it's a blue lead and it was coming to this particular pot, then you go, oh, there it is right there, really quickly. Um, I did finish all of these guys, of course. I didn't do the power out input output part because I want to kind of read. There's a couple of these I didn't do. I didn't do power amp and I didn't do this because I want to read the actual. They have some build notes that I, I should have read before I do this, but you know, me thinking I know what I'm doing have not because I've done a lot. Uh, I also didn't, but I want to read the, the notes about some of these kind of guys to make sure I'm understanding what goes on with those two. This is going to connect to connections on the board as do many of these. So I think I mentioned before, this is the global negative feedback. There's a wire for that. There's an output uh, tap center tap that will connect into that. And then the phase inverter ground will just kind of connect to chassis there. One of these other grounds, I think it's this one, I have to also read the notes. I think this ground will probably connect straight to chassis and provides all the ground for all of the, you know, the pots and whatnot here. Uh, and then down here, uh, I've got standby switch choke. The, and then I can hook my filaments up in here, the first three and the second 
three are all coupled, so you just connect one half of each of the, the filament transformers. I'll probably put them in these middle two here, and then other things can go off to, like, I'll take two of those off to the tubes, and the other two will probably be the one that connects to the, to the lamp up the top, and then we've got my high voltage and my bias. So I'll basically be snipping off the leads of those that have the uh, spades on them, cleaning them up and then soldering them in. So really at this point, I think I'm gonna read through and figure those parts out, but um, I probably won't show you soldering those in either because you've seen me soldering stuff before and soldering wires isn't exciting, but the hookup of the actual end of the chassis will cover a little bit more. So, all right, this is getting close. Now I just have to do a few more kind of modifications of the chassis to fit my new so tube sockets, a few other things like that. Um, I will be putting, for example, I think I'm gonna put one of these guys near the cathodes so that I can do my one ohm resistors to ground. They'll just kind of connect down to the I'll, I'll hook in something onto this guy and so they'll, or I might even just solder them directly across these two, you know, like one to here, one to here, and then bring in the actual leads of the grounds from the power tubes into there. Uh, I'll sort that out. But I also have for my input um, to the uh, first tube, I've got some of these little guys that I think are really cool. They're isolated um, standoffs. Uh, somebody sent these to me uh, a long time ago. I might have been slucky, but I don't remember now. But um, so you basically, take these and these are really cool. They're just a single standoff. You drill a hole through the chassis and you screw them into that, right? Well, that goes screwing into there, but these are also, if you go, let me put my multimeter on continuity mode, they are, are isolated. So, oops, that's ohms mode. So if I hook this guy to here, you can see I have continuity there, but not here. So this is an isolation piece that's, I think it's made out of like ceramic or something, but it allows you to have a connection that's just a simple, so I'll basically have the wire coming from the input jacks and soldered to here, and then the, the I think it's 22K resistor that goes to the input jack will come from here straight to the input jack, so this will be very close to the input jack because you want that grid resistor to be very close. So I'll be using one of those as well. So I have to kind of prep a lot of that stuff. I'll also be putting a few grounding positions on the board. I think there already is one for the phase inverter ground and there might have been one for the power section, but there isn't one on this side. So we'll be probably putting one there and I just have to kind of read the build notes so they talk about where the different grounds are. But I'm pretty sure one is here. One of them will be here. And then uh, for the and then there's a power amp ground right here as well. So there, those three for sure. So, all right, we'll come back after a bit here to talk through how the chassis is looking. Okay, so you can see I've got the board in, finally. We have everything else ready to go. I did have one boo-boo. Um, once I started doing this, you might see there's a decent gap here between here and here right now, but I didn't have it that way before. I had these holes quite a bit higher, uh, so they're up a bit higher. You'll see that better on the back. When I twist it around, you can see, well, first of all, I, I just did two holes here and then I've had to move them over, shift them this way. But this one I was having all kinds of problems, but I finally got it right there and I've got two more here and here. As you can see, I even missed a few there. So basically, in a nutshell, uh, I do have the board finally centered correct. I am not a machinist and anybody that uh, uh, would try and think that I was so is crazy. So um, we now have the, the, I did socket all the tubes. Socket all the tubes, I put in all the sockets, hooked the heater wires up to them. I've also connected my 1.5K, or no, they're 5.6K grid, grid stoppers. Uh, I've connected in my 22K connector right here that connects into the first input of the triode. Uh, and then that'll go with these wires off to the net, into the board, etc. But everything else, as far as I know so far, is now ready for us to just do the wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and do that part next. I'm gonna have Angela doing that for me because this tight of a chassis with my big fingers and my blind eyes becomes quite tedious. So uh, there we go. We'll be back in just a minute after the cut. All right, so to start off with Angie's gonna start soldering in just our ground connection. And then I will be also working with her to kind of understand how she's gonna wire up this for switch and the volume, etc. And we're just gonna kind of roll while we do it and I'll probably speed through the parts that are slow. So we are off. All right, so of the next three, you can see we're gonna be doing a switch, which is ones you got in your hand. And they're gonna go, I'll just kind of yeah, pull those out of the way. They're gonna go into this switch. Now, if you need to, if you think it's gonna be easier to, you can measure the distance and kind of snip them with a little bit extra. We can pull the switch out and let you connect it outside and then put the switch back in again. I don't know. We'll try it this way and okay. see how it goes. So the way this is gonna go is the common one goes in the middle and then these, this, these other two will go to the top or bottom. And, and the order, I don't know, let me think. I don't know, I'm trying to think of which one actually matters. It'll basically be bright or brighter or not at all. Right one, right two. Or... Yeah. Okay. I know, I'm just more thinking of the order of operations for the which wire. Um, right, brighter would be bottom. So, um, so the bright two 
I think, will go on the bottom one, which is that. Well, this is turned upside down too. So I know that's what I'm saying. Okay. So bright, the, the switch is the opposite. So if it's okay. this this way, it means the upper one is the one engaged right now. Okay. Uh, so I, I want the upper one to be bright, which will be this bright one, and I want the lower one to be bright too, which will be this one. Okay. And then this one goes in the middle. And then the, this one's what's called an on-off on switch. So in the middle, it's actually disengaged, and there's no circuit that can flow through. So bright two will be this one. The bottom one. Yes. This one that's turned around is the top. Yep. Now also with these switches, because they're made of plastic. I have actually ended up melting a few of them, so you kind of want to get the solder in quick and get back out again. Well, we'll see how that goes. I know, it's not fun. I'm by no means a soldering expert. Bright so. is bottom because that, bright two is bottom because that's going to be. When the switch is the all the way up, yes, right. exactly. Yep. Good. Looks good. I just want to snip off a little bit of excess. Do you want to test it first? Oh yeah, so we can do some continuity testing. So, um, effectively, um, if we push this onto the one that says common, C-O-M, and then you push this one on uh, the middle one, it should count. But if you push it on the top one, I'm going to get out of the way for a minute, or come across. So the common one, you just want to touch it to that middle one to make sure you get a beep, right? Yeah. If I push it to the top one, you don't have a beep. Bottom one, you might have a beep. No? Am I supposed to have a beep? You should, because the switch. Oh, it's in the middle. So, so that's actually a good proof that the middle didn't work. So the down, that means that is brighter. And that is, uh, now if you go to the other one. No, 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 you keep this one where it was. Move this one to the other one now. Now move to the other one. Top one. Okay, move to the bottom one works. So the switch is jumpering those connected the way they're supposed to go to between the common and them. So those are good. Just snip the leads. And they don't cut the actual wire. <laughs> Alright, that's done. All right. Can I snip these leads at the ground? Yes, yeah, so once you've soldered that ground, those can come out as well. Any excess leads always get trimmed, but you want to let them sit and cool for a little bit before you do it. Alright, All right next is going to be volume. And there should just be three wires for that. And they are literally just one, two, three. So, um, wait, let's see. Yeah, why do I only see two? I'm confused. Oh, there we go. So, I believe because I'm, I'm not positive because they've moved a lot, I believe that's right. So, basically, those just get connected in the same order one, two, three into the one, two, three there. One, two, three this way? Or yep, one, two, three? all in the same line. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, one, one. Two, Your hands two. away, I can't see you. Sorry. One, one, two, two, three, three. Yep. So if you are meaning this one, right? Yep. Okay, the angle is that look like you're pointing this one. So I was just double checking. I'm just putting it Yep. Uh, that one goes there. And I used black camera? on purpose because, what's that? Did you want to move the camera? Yeah, let me try and take a short break here to switch camera positions. All right, we're back. And we're going to do the volume pot now. So I'm just going to kind of fit each of the wires one at a time, get those sorted, and start soldering. Uh, this video, I'll just be probably speeding through a lot of this, but you'll get to see kind of the intermediate steps periodically as the wiring goes. And that's the nice thing about the way this board works is literally almost everything is a one-to-one -one, uh, connection. The only one that required a little thought was that on-off-on switch. Uh, the way that's going to work is there's three connections. One is called COM for common. That will be the center one. And then the other two are one and two. Uh, the, and the way it looks like to me is that the bright and brighter I think I have right is the you know one and two, or those are the outer edges. And if the switch is in the middle, it doesn't connect either side. So. I hate stripping. Just put it out there now. <laughs> That's why you're not a stripper. Too. Huh? <laughs> I said I did it in college too. No. All right. All right, so if you've done all three there, we're gonna stop for a bit. 
because basically you guys have seen now a switch and a volume pot. The rest of these, I'm gonna just let her solder without filming them because they're just volume pots or types of pots. The only qualification I'm gonna make now before we do it is we'll probably cover this one because that's a more complicated one and this one because that's a more complicated one. Uh, and I will just clarify, this is gonna be the next, the next one we do is the drive pot. We'll still do it, but we're gonna be using shielded wire and it comes all the way over to here on the board. So we're gonna have to run a couple of runs of shielded wire just to make sure that that doesn't add noise, but I just wanted the drive pot to be named the same as what's on the top of the, of the amp. So uh, at any rate, um, I'm not gonna continue filming at this point because we've got you to see a couple of those. We'll come back for a couple of those other ones I mentioned, and especially for the end down on the left where we'll be doing the send return and the um, switching, uh, like the foot switch jack, but that'll be a, a bit later. So uh, we'll come back to that after the cut, but after the miracle of editing, you'll see the next few in a moment. For the Rock Jazz Switch, the trickier part really on this guy is uh, you have to kind of visualize um, a line. And this is the guy right here. This is, and it, there's one and two because it's dual poles and dual throw. So line one and line two or line two and line one, whichever way you want to do it. We're going to do two here and then one there because two is the bottom here. Uh, and then the center one is going to be the common. So whichever side, left or right, you decide it was one or two, you'll see uh, COM1 and COM2. So common center one would go one, pin there, common center one would go pin there, you just decide which one is one and two. Then for normally closed versus normally open, normally closed means when you have the switch in the position you consider off, that is the normally closed position, the other side should in that point be open. So that when you engage the switch and it's on, that is now what would but normally has been closed is now opened, if that makes sense, or vice versa. But So you have to decide that, but ultimately it's just a decision, and if for some reason you find that you don't like it, then you could just spin the switch around 180 degrees and you'll get the behavior you want. But ultimately, you kind of have to decide which one you want to be considered normally closed and which one normally open. In this case, we're going to be normally closed on the bottom because it's two wires and we just have to jump that wire through two. So that should be, even though it's a little bit tighter, it's a little bit easier than trying to run two wires down below. So she's going to go ahead and do that. I don't think we necessarily need to film all of it because it's just, what we'll do is we'll come back after the cut with her being done with that. So we'll be back after a bit. All right, so if you look right there, you will see we've gotten all of this stuff along here. I'm just using a flashlight because it's kind of dark in there. All of this wired up to um, including that double switch right there that I'm kind of highlighting the light on right there. The dual pull, dual throw, that's the um, rock jazz switch. Uh, we've got all the pots accepting this one here, but we got the mid one done. Mid one was, uh, we had some troubles with, but we finally got that sorted out. Um, just a couple of minor mess ups because it is complicated keeping track of all of the different locations that you're connecting things. But at any rate, we've got it all connected up now all the way up to this one minus this one. Uh, but we'll pull these three over that one. This is a switch. And then we just found out we, we had a couple of boo-boos. One was I didn't know how long things were going to be. But for the mid, because the mid on this fender for some reason it says treble base mid. So I put the mid all the way over here, but these leads for the mid are actually clear over about here. And so to get them, we had to actually solder a few more connections to give them longer length instead of desoldering from the board. And then we just found the same thing for the uh, presence. The presence is here, but the presence pot is all the way over to the left. Let me kind of pan over so I can make sure that's in frame. Right there. Yeah, so right there. So it has to come from, from there to there and we just don't have enough so we're stopping for now we'll come back to this and when we do we are going to go ahead and do the same thing there just add some extensions to those wires so that they'll make it out to here um, so all we have left to wire on this side is going to be the base pot the master volume the od volume and the presence pot these foot switch and these two jacks and then we'll also get a lot of the stuff on this side wired up with a, you know this kind of stuff then we're going to flip it around and we'll get the wiring in the sockets and we'll be done so made good progress today thanks for your help la la okay angie's not available to help out this weekend so i'm going to be doing the work myself uh, but uh on it resumes uh you can see we kind of got through a lot of this stuff i do need to do the overdrive but I'm, i've got some short jumpers to do that um i think i might wire that up now because i'm about at that point well no actually we want to finish the ones that we're, I wanted to wire past it to get all the wires out of the way, so we're just doing it on top of things with a shield of wire. So anyway, I'll resume now and get things going. All right, there's the base pot done. Next is presence, which sadly is all the way over here. And these are just not gonna cut it. 
so I'm gonna have to extend these a little bit. That's kind of annoying. But we'll let you watch me doing some extensions here. So the first thing you wanna do is get a fairly long amount of lead stripped because you wanna do a kind of a really good quality junction. Oops, where'd that go? Oh well, it'll fall out. Then I have to get myself a little bit of lead. Let's get purple first. Cover the distance. And we're gonna exaggerate this time to waste some wire because I don't want to have to fight this again. So then what I'm gonna do is basically you kind of cross them over at about the middle point and you wrap a couple of loose windings like that and then you wrap really, really tightly for several in a row like that. And I'll do the same on this side. This is what's called a lineman splice. I'm not doing it super well, but you'll get the idea. That is, uh, and then you and it can snip the excess leaves away, but hopefully that's in focus. If not, um, you know, I can't undo that at this point. <laughs> but, uh, and then, oh, I gotta clean that tip. That's looking ugly. You can see already I can put solder up a good, you know, almost a quarter of an inch away from where the iron is once you get it well um, heated and whatnot. So I'm going to fill that all in, let that cool off, and then I'm going to get a small piece of shrink tube that we'll put over that. But I do need to snip off those little bits of these leads that stick up like that. And there's one over here. And in theory, this should just totally slide over. I gotta let it cool off a little bit or it'll just melt. Alright, it's cool pretty well. And sometimes I can run into problems where one little part has a little too much solder and it doesn't want to slide past it. I'm fighting that battle out, but I think I'm getting, I'm winning. I've almost got it covered. Now, oh, just a teeny bit more. And we're covered. So now I can get out my We'll do the same thing with this one, and then we can run them over the length we need for the presents and snip that. So, where's my blue wire? There it is.
Alright. So, for the presents part, um, I'm trying to remember if this shows this commonly on the schematics. Um, if not, I will show and explain it. But, um, quite often in the presents part, they'll just show kind of what looks like a... Oh no, actually this is done well. So, if that's very visible, you'll see the presence pot, you have your input, and then you'll have the, the um, wiper, but they also show a connection from the wiper to the same connection as the bottom. The reason you want that is you want this to work as at least its maximum resistance in case the wiper comes uncontacted, and that should be the case with anything when a, when a, a potentiometer is being used as more of a variable resistor, you want to connect the wiper to the output end, or to, you know, so that when it comes in, it can go through the wiper, that would be a shorter resistance distance, but if for some reason the wiper disconnects, it has the maximum resistance of the pot. So I'm going to basically take the, one of the leads and go through the middle one and over to, this, to the side one as well, and then the other lead will just go to that side. That way I, I kind of jumpers between the wiper and the earth, you know, the, or that, not earth in this case, but that third connection. Um, so, in the way this ordered is purple, so I will go purple, and I'm effectively going to make a slightly longer lead for this as mentioned, and I will I'm gonna try and tuck these wires down fairly low, but I'm gonna make it kind of long so that I can jumper it through both of those. So, and that is going to be fun. This is one of the problems I've been battling is that this chassis is so tight that some of this stuff is not easy, but we can get this in there. Oh my laws. I'm gonna probably need to loosen that up and rotate it just so that I can use it. I might do it to both of these two. So I'm gonna take a quick short break at the cut. You see a lot of these are rotated sideways just because getting up under there is a little hard. So I'm gonna take a short break and rearrange those so I can get into them. Be right back. All right, so I'm back. I rearranged those and Angie did get some time to come help out today. So here she is. Um, so I was just starting to effectively wire this one in the presence pot. And what that wire is in right now I couldn't do is that you needed to jumper between the middle and the side one. Mm -hmm. And then the blue one will just go in the first one that's left over afterwards. So I got it in the middle one, but I couldn't go over to that left side. So that's because I had to rotate it. So I've rotated it now. If you want to go ahead and go wild with that, please do. Mm -hmm. this. Slowly, so slowly, so now. Ah! 